Thank you for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, Britain's incoming prime minister and his strong stance in support of Israel. Rishi Sunak, set to take office as the third prime minister just this year, has made clear his support of the Jewish state and his views on Jerusalem. We'll bring you the details. What really happened when the FBI raided the home of a pro-life activist? Mark says, please, I have seven babies in the house. I'm going to open the door. He opens the door and immediately there's guns pointed at him, uh, a gun pointed at me on the staircase. We'll have a look at the shocking events of the raid that has raised major questions about the FBI. America's students falling behind in the classroom with falling test scores in important subjects. Teachers, parents, students, and taxpayers have not been told the truth about student performance. What part did the COVID lockdowns play in this educational decline? Protests spreading around the world against the Islamic government of Iran. We are here for Iranian, to support Iranian in Iran and send a voice. We want regime change for sure. We want mullahs out of Iran. We hear the message these protesters are sending to world leaders. And he's an actor, a comedian, a producer, and a youth pastor. Yet, even with a successful career, Kel Mitchell suffered from depression, but he learned an important lesson. Joy is having that joy no matter what. And that no matter what is, no matter what happens, no matter what comes up, I'm going to find the gratitude in everything. These stories and more today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We begin this half hour in Britain, where the new prime minister, Rishi Sunak, became the new prime minister today. He'll appoint a cabinet to deal with the U.K.'s economic and political crises. Sunak is the U.K.'s first leader of color and first Hindu to hold the top political office. And at age 42, the youngest prime minister in 200 years. But while most of the world will focus on the economic quagmire facing Sunak in Britain, in Israel, Sunak's earlier statements about the Jewish state are making headlines. The Times of Israel quoted Sunak at a conservative Friends of Israel gathering two months ago as saying Jerusalem is indisputably the historic capital of Israel and that there is a, quote, very strong case to be made for moving Britain's embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He also pledged to support a bill in parliament opposing the global boycott, divestment and sanctions movement against Israel. He wrote in the UK's Jewish News, the Jewish community is right to call out those who seek to damage the only Jewish state in the world. Sunak has also raised his voice against the dramatic rise in anti-Semitic incidents, which began more than a year ago, saying, quote, everyone across parliament and the country must take a robust position on eliminating anti-Semitism, and I am determined to ensure this scourge on our society is eradicated. In an interview with the Jewish Chronicle, Sunak also praised Israel as a shining beacon of hope, We'll have more on Sunak and his background in the days ahead here on CBN Newswatch. We return now to the United States. The recent report of an early morning FBI raid with armed agents at the home of a pro-life activist raised serious questions about the agency's actions, tactics, and priorities. According to his wife, the agents came with guns drawn and arrested Mark Huck in front of her and their seven children. As CBN's Dan Andros reports, emerging details indicate the dangerous raid could have been avoided. It was terrifying. You know, the children are screaming and crying. Um, you, know, you just figure like one move from a four-year-old and something tragic could have happened. Heavily armed, um, shields, um, helmets, vests, big, huge, long rifle type guns. They moved to the front door, proceeding to bang and scream, frightening her family. Mark says, please, I have seven babies in the house. I'm going to open the door. He opens the door and immediately there's guns pointed at him, uh, a gun pointed at me on the staircase. During the ensuing chaos, she repeatedly asked the agents to identify themselves and provide documentation as to why they were there. Do you have a warrant? And they said, well, we're taking him whether we have a warrant or not. And I said, well, you can't do that. According to records, the arrest stems from an October 2021 incident in Philadelphia between Hauk and a Planned Parenthood volunteer. The volunteer claims that during an argument, Hauk shoved him to the ground. 
The feds have charged Houck with violating the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances, or FACE Act. His attorney, Peter Breen, strongly disagrees. They were away from the gates. The alleged victim, the abortion escort, walked to them. No patients around, no reason to go there other than to plant himself next to Mark's son and harass him. Local police called to the scene that day noted only a minor scrape, declining to pursue the case any further. Bruce Love, the volunteer, later filed a criminal complaint that was eventually thrown out of state court. As to why the Justice Department would bother pursuing the case, Breen sees Hauk as the first casualty in a larger war. Mark is innocent. Period. End of sentence. That's it. And this is a political prosecution, pure and simple. This is really their first major foray, their first public attempt to intimidate and frighten the pro-life movement. And they, you know, as Bishop Coffey said, they picked the wrong guy. While the raid shocked the Hawks, the federal case against him was no surprise. The Justice Department sent Hawk this letter in April, notifying him that he was the target of a grand jury investigation involving the FACE Act. Hauk then retained the Thomas More Society for legal representation. Emails Thomas More provided to CBN show a heavy-handed raid was totally unnecessary. They volunteered to bring their client in to avoid putting the Hauk family through, quote, needless disruption. Those emails were apparently ignored, as the next anyone heard from the government was at 7 a.m. that Friday morning when federal agents banged on Hauk's door. My dream, my vision, is that Merrick Garland personally apologizes to the Hauk family for what he did to them. We turn now to problems in America's education system. The nation's report card is in, and it shows students across the country are falling behind in the classroom. A new report highlights the decline in test scores, especially in math and reading. So now education officials are scrambling to find solutions. Brody Carter brings us the story. Teachers, parents, students, and taxpayers have not been told the truth about student performance. More than 20 years of educational gains have been wiped out across the country since 2017, which indicates the COVID lockdown isn't the only culprit. These national statistics regularly track math and reading comprehension among fourth and eighth grade in a measurement often called the nation's report card. We will hold ourselves and our schools accountable. I'm directing the Board of Education to overhaul our broken school accreditation system. The numbers show Virginia has hit the hardest, boasting the nation's lowest reading standard along with the lowest proficiency in testing. The state ties Maryland with the largest decline in fourth grade math since 2017 and the largest decline for fourth grade reading. Our black and our Hispanic students across subject areas and across grade levels are far behind their peers. While the head of the organization releasing the numbers called them the clearest picture yet of the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic on learning, Governor Youngkin also blames previous administrations due to declining numbers well before the pandemic. Seeing a remarkable decrease in student test scores of this size, it's actually very unusual. Jonathan Butcher with the Heritage Foundation says special interest groups and school unions that fought to close schools should also clearly bear responsibility. Those districts that showed the biggest drops, places like Chicago, places like Philadelphia, where the unions actively kept teachers out of the classroom, um, I just think it, it really shows poorly on those special interest groups and how they uh, put their own interests ahead of students. States like Virginia will depend on federal dollars to help fix the broken system. Roughly $150 billion in COVID relief money remains unspent. Now schools are scrambling to figure out how to turn those dollars into better test scores. They could spend it on direct support to families to access tutoring. They could spend it on extending the school year for students who need it. Regardless of who's to blame for America's declining classrooms, educators say it's time for everyone to roll up their sleeves and get to work. We need to come together as a country around public education. We are inextricably linked to the success of public education in this country. It doesn't matter where you live or where your child goes to school. We're only as good as the poorest performing school. While the data doesn't show a clear connection between back-to-school policies and academic performance, Butcher points out private and Catholic schools were able to maintain stable test scores compared to schools that shut their doors during COVID. Brody Carter, CBN News. I remind you now about a special program this evening to help Christian men dealing with mental health issues from a biblical perspective. 
to turn to CBN News, our channel will air the special one hour summit carried real support for mental health. It puts to, it's put together by Promise Keepers and it airs this evening at 8 Eastern Time on the CBN News Channel. Another reminder for you as well, if you miss an episode of CBN Newswatch, you can still catch it on YouTube. Simply type in CBN Newswatch today in the YouTube search box and you will see older episodes as well. Coming up, protest against the headline Islamic government of Iran over the death of a young woman in custody are spreading around the world from Germany to the United States. We're going to have the story for you when we come back. Iranians around the world are keeping up their protest over the death of the 22-year-old Masha Amini. Tehran's morality police arrested her for allegedly not properly wearing a hijab headscarf. She suspiciously died in their custody shortly after. Over the weekend, the emphasis turned towards the regime as protesters took to the streets from Berlin to Washington, D.C. CBN's Maya Zadari has the details. In conjunction with anti-regime protests in Iran, tens of thousands took to the streets in major cities including Berlin, Washington, Toronto, and many more. We are here for Iranian, to support Iranian in Iran and send a voice. We want regime change, for sure. We want mullahs out of Iran. Protesters calling on President Biden and other Western powers to abandon negotiations with the Iranian regime. They're not going to get a spend on the Iranian people. They're not going to use it for any good reason. They're just going to use it for killing Iranian people inside of Iran and outside of Iran. Critics of the Iran deal warn sanction relief would flow billions of dollars to regime's pocket to fund their proxies throughout the region and intensify the crackdown on its people. According to the United Nations, violent crackdowns have led to the death of at least 23 children and thousands of arrests. Do not send money to them. That's going to be bulletin to our kids' head. Exiled Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi recently passed along a message from Iranians criticizing the West for lack of support. Well, they just have to do something other than just standing with us in solidarity. They need to do something and they need to help us. A Ukrainian protester told CBN News she felt citizens from both countries are fighting the same enemy. So I want to support all women, all people, because I believe we all fight against the same regime. We all fight against the Iranian regime and we need to scream the world about that. A number of Republicans have introduced the Mahsa Amini Act that would sanction Iran's supreme leader and his inner circle for human rights crimes. We expect and hope that world leaders will stand with the free people of Iran, that they will side with the people and not with the oppressive dictatorial regime. Given U.S. support of this movement and the announcement of sanctions against the morality police, Iran claims it will take legal action accusing America of direct involvement in the protests. Moira Yazdari, CBN News, Washington. Still ahead, Kel Mitchell's had a long run of success as a comedian and an actor, and he's also been a producer and youth pastor. But there was another side to his life as well, as he suffered from depression. We're going to hear that story right after this. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. Well, you may know him from the long-running live-action series All That and the sitcom Kenan and Kel, or even the popular movie Good Burger. Comedian and actor Kel Mitchell has been making people laugh for years, along with being a comedian and an award-winning, an award-nominated actor. He's also a producer and a youth pastor. He seems to have it all, but what some may not know is he suffered from depression in the middle of that booming career. Kel Mitchell appeared on the Prayer Link program this week to talk about his story and to give some words of encouragement to the next generation. 
We see you on these popular shows that we named earlier, and you are bringing laughter to so many people. But deep down, yeah. you were hurting and actually suffering from depression and even attempted suicide. What was going on, and, and how were you able to overcome all of that? Um, man, I overcome uh, a lot of that uh, through the Lord. You know, uh, I grew up in the church, so I always uh, knew God. But then there's a difference between knowing God and having a relationship with God. And so um, a lot of, uh, you know, I went through a lot of depression. I went through uh, a lot of different uh, relationships with meeting people within the business. And it's not just the business, it's people that were on the outside. Because, uh, you know, like you're adulting uh, within, uh, you know, the public eye. And so you're a subject to public opinion. Uh, you don't know if people are hanging out with you uh, because of your character or if they know the real you. And so it was just different things that I was dealing with, um, you know, growing up in Chicago and uh, losing friends, you know, that do gang violence and things like that. And then coming to Hollywood uh, to realize that there was a whole nother uh, beast as far as like understanding uh, and seeing people and navigating through people and them showing them real their real selves. Uh, and I went through a lot of that, you know, and so uh, mm -hmm. with dealing with that, it was like, OK, how do I deal with these things? I went through uh, substance abuse. I went through a lot of different things. But what ultimately helped was uh, having the love of God in my Amen. life. Amen. Yeah. Having a relationship yeah. with Jesus, that's what it's all about. That's mm -hmm. that's what the world yeah. is hungry for. They may not know it, but that's what they're searching yeah. for, that we've all been there. Yeah. And, and today you are a youth pastor. Uh, this is a very yeah. important calling to reach young people with the gospel. What are some of the biggest issues you see affecting young people right now, and how are you working to make a difference? Yeah, you know, I, I think with uh, with the youth right now, there is a lot of, you know, cyberbullying. There's uh, frustration, you know. Uh, there's everything is like right now, as far as like you could ask Siri and all these things and just ask for things right now. <laughs> and But what happens when you're going through something and you have to wait to find uh, that love that you're looking for and searching for? Everybody's searching for something online, searching for this searching for that. And what it is, is that they really need the love of Christ, right? They really need that love in their life uh, to really help them. And I really feel like once you understand like how God feels about them, sometimes some kids don't even, you know, get to feel that uh, peace and joy from someone that they're around or friends that they're around. And when they realize, when they step into this word, Right. When they step into this word and they hear about how much God loves them and that they are part of a royal family when they invite him into their hearts, uh, it can really change things. And I'm always talking about finding the gratitude and everything, uh, because there's a big difference between being happy and being joyful. Uh, having that happiness is just like, hey, it's an emotion. It's my birthday. I can just be happy. But then a circumstance comes up or a situation that you have to deal with, and it can bring you back into that depression or bring you into an emotional way. But joy is having that joy no matter what. And that no matter what is, no matter what happens, no matter what comes up, I'm going to find the gratitude in everything. And so a lot of times I tell them, start your day out with the Lord. Start it off, take your anxiety, take your depression, whatever it may be, to the Lord first. So then that way you prepare for your day. And so when you prepare for your day, you prepare, you put on your clothes when you go for your day, you do all that, but do we prepare spiritually? And I had to find that out too. So that was something that I did. I prepared spiritually for my day, get ready for my day, and that my response is always to respond in love no matter what happens. And that made me find the gratitude within everything. And that's why I did my book, uh, Bless Mode, uh, <laughs> which is a 90-day uh, devotional. It really is about letting you know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. And no matter what happens, it's for you to remember that. Uh, and that's what this book is all about, to remember and get up and prepare for your day. Yeah. And you can watch Kel Mitchell's full interview this evening on the prayer link. It is on the CBN News Channel at 630 Eastern. You can also download the CBN News app and watch it on demand. Coming up, faith, praise, and prayer in the nation's capital this week as thousands gathered for the latest Let Us Worship event. We're going to bring you a look when we come back. Stay with us. 
moment of faith, prayer, worship, and celebration in Washington, D.C. this weekend as thousands gathered in the nation's capital for Sean Foyt's latest Let Us Worship event, which included a worship celebration on the National Mall, where thousands gathered to join a movement that is praying to see a change in the United States. Foyt has been leading the Let Us Worship movement throughout the country since 2020, and he has held an event in Washington, D.C. for the last three years. He told CBN News he believed this year's event was a we are going to take D.C. by storm for Jesus kind of moment. And he said this year's gathering felt a little different, saying, quote, it just felt historic, it was powerful, it really feels like it's getting easier and easier to worship in Washington. You can find out more about this worship gathering, including their visits to the Supreme Court and the White House at CBNNews.com. Time now for your Tuesday Tweetable, and we want to leave you with this thought to post, tag, tweet, and share with those in your circles. Life storms will come, the winds of circumstance will blow, seasons of change will come and go, but God remains through it all. You are never alone. He promises never to leave you and never to forsake you. With that word, I encourage you to make today a terrific Tuesday. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online, cbnnews.com. We would love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us at that address right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.